Corbion is uh, originated from the Dutch company Suikerunie. And Suikerunie was of course always very strong in uh, production of sugar. And one of the products you can make from sugar through a fermentation process is lactic acid. And since over 100 years we produce from the sugar the lactic acid. And lactic acid is used in a number of applications, mostly in food ingredients, to improve shelf life of food. But from lactic acid you can also make polylactic acid. And polylactic acid is the biopolymer, and that's what we're concentrating on today. That's our focus for today. And PLA Bioplastics, it's a polymer made from natural resources, from sugar, from corn. And it also has the possibility to fully biodegrade uh, when it's exposed to the environment. So within Corbion, uh, we have a number of projects focused on bio-based polymers. Uh, two of the more advanced ones are in PLA, polylactic acid as a biopolymer. Uh, as you might have heard in the press, we have recently announced our intention to build a 75,000 ton PLA bioplastics factory in Thailand. Uh, a large amount of our resources is going into that activity. Uh, a second activity, which is a, a part of this bigger initiative, is to promote in the, in the world, in the application area, the high heat PLA. So our technology people have developed a higher heat resistant version of PLA. Uh, which gives the possibility to use PLA in much more demanding applications. So whereas in the past um, a cold drinking cup could only stand temperatures of uh, maybe 50, 60 degrees Celsius, we have now developed a high heat PLA alternative, uh, which can stand temperatures of uh, 100 degrees Celsius without any problems. And that's a big innovation. And to drive this innovation forward, to commercialize this, to bring this in the market, we as Corbion are doing and supporting a lot of what we call application development, working with our partners down in the value chain to get the new materials in the applications. So when we look at the, the bio-based economy, uh, we can identify a number of opportunities for the bio-based economy, but also a number of threats. And if we look at the opportunities, definitely we all are aware of the mega trends, uh, energy becoming scarce, resources becoming scarce, uh, people wanting to do more uh, for the planet, being uh, less pollutive. And in these uh, megatrends, bioplastics, the sustainability aspects of bioplastics, will play a vital role. And this gives enormous chances for bioplastics uh, as, a, as a solution to these problems. Of course, next to that, bioplastics offer uh, in the European economy highly valued, uh, high added value jobs, employment for people, which is also a very important aspect of the bioplastics, of the bio-based economy. Uh, of course, we also see some threats. Um, we know that for bioplastics, there's quite a number of misconceptions, uh, unfortunately, present in the market. Uh, one of the most common misconceptions is that uh, bioplastics uh, compete with food and compete with uh, the, availabil or the availability of food to feed uh, the people in the world. Uh, that's really a misconception. If we, if we look at those numbers, uh, we know that today less than 0.01% of oil available agricultural land is actually used for the production of bioplastics. And that percentage of land used for bioplastics will also remain very, very small in the future. So that's one big misconception. The other uh, big risk uh, that we see for the bio-based uh, economy is the fact that we today are a relatively small economy. Bioplastics are today still less than 1% of the total amount of plastics used. Um, and we have to compete with many of the traditional plastics, which have a much bigger economy of scale, which have a much bigger and more efficient infrastructure to produce these polymers. And that's another risk for the bio-based uh, polymer industry. Um, so as, uh, as Corbion, uh, we are not yet into uh, biopolymer production yet. Uh, we have announced our intentions to do so. Uh, when we will go into full production, which will be a few years from now, uh, we will produce PLA, polylactic acid, bio-based and biodegradable biopolymer. Um, the key applications of those polymers will be uh, in packaging. Uh, so this is, for example, uh, a foamed ice cream box. Uh, looks very much like a polystyrene box, uh, but in effect it's fully bio-based and fully biodegradable, making it a unique uh, box. Uh, so that's a packaging application. We will see other uh, 
typical single-use applications. For example, uh, the well-known uh, coffee capsules uh, produced uh, to fit in the Nespresso machines. Uh, these are definitely single-use, they will always be single-use, uh, but it will be much better for the environment if they are bio-based and compostable, so that after their useful life they will go back to CO2, water and building blocks uh, for the future generation. So when we, we think about the production of uh, PLA bioplastics, um, of course we have to think what this will bring for society and for the, uh, the environment. Well, the first thing that it will bring, uh, and that's very tangible, are of course jobs uh, for, uh, in agriculture, uh, where people can grow the biomass needed for the production of the bioplastics, but also further downstream when uh, the biomass is processed into lactic acid and to PLA, into plastics and plastics converted to articles. That's a whole industry where a lot of highly skilled, uh, well-paid and high added value jobs are present. So that's one very big benefit. The other overriding benefit, and that's the reason why a lot of brand owners prefer to buy bioplastics and to use bioplastics in their packaging, is of course the environmental benefits, are the sustainability benefits. And typically what we see is when we have uh, packaging or other products made from PLA bioplastics. Uh, first of all, the carbon footprint will be significantly lower than when you use traditional materials. So that's one big benefit. Secondly, at the end of life, you have multiple options to discard the product. Um, and of course, it's very good to recycle products, to use them a few more times before you discard them. But in the end, when you discard them, the bioplastic products, they can compost and they will break down to harmless substances, CO2, water, biomass, leaving behind no harmful substances for the environment. And those are, I think, the, uh, the biggest benefits that bioplastics can bring to the society. Uh, the bio-based city, I've heard about the bio-based city and uh, I think it's a very interesting concept. Uh, I think it's also very important that already on a very early stage of education, a very early stage of, of thinking about our planet, thinking about our economy, uh, people are thinking about uh, the bio-based city, the bio-based economy, or in other words, the circular economy. Uh, and if you would ask me for a few things to, to keep in mind when designing this bio-based city, uh, I, would, I would come actually with two, uh, two points to put the, uh, put the attention on. I think the first one is um, when we think about bio-based and bio-based city or circular economy, it's not always necessarily by definition the case that bio-based is better than the traditional solutions. And I think when you make this trade-off, do I do a bio-based solution, do I do a traditional solution, clearly the bio-based solution has to show sustainability, economical and environmental benefits for the planet. Otherwise, why would you do it? Uh, the second aspect, and that's more coming to the circular aspect of the bio-based city. Um, in the circular economy, of course, we know that every, every byproduct, every waste stream is actually a, a starting point for a next product, for a next development, for a next usage. And you should really keep that in mind uh, when designing the bio-based city. Um, and that sounds a bit abstract, and maybe to give one small example, uh, which we actually managed to implement, for example, in the city of Milan. Um, there we have uh, the shopping bag. So everyone, of course, goes out every once in a while to the shop to buy some things. And uh, in some cases, you just don't have with you a shopping bag to take the, uh, the goods home that you've bought. Uh, in that case, you need a shopping bag. Now, we know that shopping bags can be very pollutive for the environment. And for this reason, um, it's better to use as less as possible shopping bags as possible. But if you have to use them, uh, we would propagate a bio-based and compostable shopping bag. Why? Because the consumer can take home his shopping bag, and once he's at home, he can use the shopping bag to collect organic waste. Uh, the organic waste is collected in the compostable bag, goes into organic waste bin. And we know that when uh, consumers at home have these compostable bags readily available, then they will collect more organic waste. 
And the more organic waste they collect, the less organic waste goes into residual waste, goes into landfill, goes into incineration. And then you have a bio-based, bioplastic solution, part of the circular economy, not only by being a lower carbon footprint as a shopping bag as such, but helping, enabling to create much bigger benefits uh, for society, diverting much more organic waste from landfill. And for example, in the city of Milan, just to, num uh, to give you a number, um, people collected over more than 200 kilo more organic waste once these shopping bags were introduced compared to the previous situation.